50 years ago, in early August 1972, President Idi Amin summarily decreed the expulsion of Uganda's Asian community, that is, the Indians and the Pakistanis. Over 50,000 people were given a scant three months to tie up their affairs and leave the country. At the time of the expulsion, there were about 80,000 individuals of Indian descent in Uganda of whom 23,000 had their applications for citizenship both processed and accepted. The expulsion took place against the backdrop of anti-Indian sentiment in Uganda, with Amin accusing a minority of the Asians of disloyalty, non-integration and commercial malpractice. Amin defended the expulsion by arguing that it was giving Uganda back to ethnic Ugandans. Many of those who were expelled were citizens of the United Kingdom and colonies, and 27,200 emigrated to the United Kingdom. Of the other refugees who were accounted for, 6,000 went to Canada, 4,500 refugees ended up in India, and 2,500 went to nearby Kenya or to Pakistan. In total, some 5,655 firms, ranches, farms, and agricultural estates were expropriated, along with house cars and other household goods. The presence of South Asians in Uganda was the result of deliberate choices by the British administration 1894 to 1962. They were brought to the Uganda protectorate by the British to serve as a buffer between the Europeans and Africans in the middle ranks of commerce and administration. In addition, in the 1890s, 32,000 laborers from British Indians we were brought to Southeast Africa under indentured labor contracts to work on the construction of the Uganda Railway. Most of the surviving Indians returned home, but 6,724 individuals decided to remain in the Africa Great Lakes after the line's completion. At the time of the explosion, there were approximately 80,000 individuals of South Asian descent in Uganda of whom 23,000 had had their applications for citizenship both processed and accepted. A further 50,000 were British passport holders, though Ami himself used the apparently exaggerated figure of 80,000 British passport holders in his initial expulsion speech. These British had invested in the education of the Asian minority in preference to that of the indigenous Ugandans. By the early 1970s, many Indians in the Southeast Africa and Uganda were employed in the sartoria and banking businesses, and Indophobia was already ingrained by the start of Amin's rule in 1971. While not all Uganda Asians were well off, they were on average better off than the indigenous communities, constituting 1% of the population while earning a fifth of the national income. Indians were stereotyped as merely traders and labelled as Dukawalas who tried to cheat unsuspecting purchasers and looked out only for their own families. Racial segregation was institutionalized. Gated ethnic communities served elites, healthcare and schooling services. Additionally, the tariff system in Uganda had historically been oriented towards the economic interests of South Asian traders. In August 1971, Ami announced a review of the citizenship status awarded to Uganda's Asian community, followed by the declaration of a census of Uganda's Asian population in October that year. In order to resolve the misunderstandings regarding the role of Uganda's Asian minority in society, he then convened an Indian conference for December. In a memorandum presented on the second day of the conference, he set out his hope that the wide gap between Uganda Asians and Africans would narrow. While paying tribute to India's contribution to the economy and the professions, he accused the minority of the Asian population of disloyalty, non-integration and commercial malpractice. On the vexed question of citizenship, he said his government would recognize citizenship rights already granted but all outstanding applications for citizenship would be cancelled. This expulsion of an ethnic minority was not the first in Uganda's history as the country's Kenya minority, numbering approximately 30,000, had been expelled in 1969 to 1970. On the 4th of August 1972, 
army declared that Britain would need to take on the responsibility for caring for British subjects who were of Asian origin, accusing them of sabotaging Uganda's economy and encouraging corruption. The deadline for British subjects to leave was confirmed at three months, which came to mean the 8th of October. On the 9th of August, the policy was expanded to include citizens of India, Pakistan and Bangladesh. The position of the 23,000 Asians who had been granted Gandan citizenship was less clear. Not originally included, on the 19th of August, they were similarly added to the list before being re-exempted three days later following international protests. Many chose to leave rather than endure further intimidation, with only 4,000 known to have stayed. Exemptions for certain professions were added, then later removed. The precise motivation for the expulsion remains unclear. Some of his former supporters suggested that it followed a dream in which he claimed Allah had told him to expel them, as well as plot vengeance against the British government for refusing to provide him with arms to invade Tanzania. Although it is not confirmed, there was a rumor circulating around the Ugandan Asians that Ami fell in love with a married Indian woman. Her family sent her away to India to get away from him and this made Ami so angry that he wanted to expel every Indian from the country in retaliation. Ami defended the expulsion by arguing that he was giving Uganda back to the ethnic Ugandans. Idi Ami quoted in Uganda a modern history. We are determined to make the ordinary Uganda master of his own destiny and above all to see that he enjoys the wealth of his country. Our deliberate policy is to transfer the economic control of Uganda into the hands of Ugandans for the first time in our country's history. The expulsion and redistribution of property were officially termed as Operation Mafuta Mingi. Ugandan soldiers during this period engaged in thefts and physical and sexual violence against the Asians with impunity. Restrictions were imposed on the sale or transfer of private businesses by Ugandan Asians and on the 16th of August, Ami made it clear that after he was done with Indian-owned businesses, European-owned businesses would be next. The repercussion of this action The Asians only milked the cow but did not feed it to eat more milk. President Idi Ami said the Asians only milked the cow but they did not feed it to yield more milk. There are now black faces in every shop and industry. All the big cars in Uganda are now driven by Africans and not the former blood suckers. The rest of Africa can learn from us. Journalists Tony Avagan and Martha Oni described the explosion as the most explicitly racist policy ever adopted in black Africa. Before the explosion, Asians owned many large businesses in Uganda, but the purge of Asians from Uganda's economy was virtually total. A military committee was made responsible for the reallocation of the confiscated properties, though Ami also personally redirected some materials. In total, some 5,655 firms, ranches, farms, and agricultural estates were reallocated along with cars, homes, and other household goods. For political reasons, most were reallocated to individuals, with 176 going to government bodies, 33 being reallocated to semi-state organizations, and 2 going to charities. Possibly the biggest winner was the state-owned Uganda Development Corporation, which gained control over some of the largest enterprises. Though both the rapid nature of the growth and the sudden lack of experience, technicians and managers proved a challenge for the corporations, resulting in a restructuring of the sector in 1974 and 1975. Though some of the properties fell into the hands of Uganda's traditional businessmen, most of the direct beneficiaries were soldiers and government officials. While the expulsion was initially popular in Uganda, mismanagement of the resources resulted in economic difficulties. By the time Amin's regime collapsed in 1979, it was rumored that there were no more than 50 Asians in Uganda. The return of Asians to Uganda. Thousands of Indians returned to Uganda starting in 1986 when Yoweri Museveni assumed power. Museveni criticized Amin's policies and invited the Indians to return. According to Museveni, Gujaratis have played a lead role 
in Uganda's social and industrial development. I knew that this community can do wonders for my country and they have been doing it for the last many decades. The Indians surfacing in Uganda have helped to build the economy of Uganda and are financially well settled.